Hello, and welcome to another episode of Model Railway in Action. Today we're going to upgrade our ScotRail HST from analog DC to be controllable through the Bluetooth HMDCC solution from Hornby. Now to do this, we're going to make sure our power supply is compatible. We're going to open up our local, fit the special decoder and its speaker, and then install an app onto an iPad, configure everything up, make sure everything's the right versions, and then check out its maneuverability and the sounds. So let's go. Now, as you probably noticed on the layout, we recently upgraded to use GageMaster DC analog controllers. However, at the time of filming, these are unsupported by the HMTCC Hornby system. So we've had to invest in a Hornby power controller. As you can see, we've uh, hidden away the chunky power clip in one of our tunnels. Let's just test that uh, the correct voltage is on our selected DCC line. And yes, it's 15.25 volts, which is pretty good. Okay, so here we have our HMDCC Bluetooth decoder box from Hornby. This is the 8-pin variety, which is the only one that will fit into our ScotRail HST, as it's a slightly older locomotive. Now, let's see what exciting items we can find within the box. So, we have a, a couple of uh, printed quick start guides to cover all the languages supported. Okay, so here we have our white Bluetooth decoder chip. The sugar cube speaker, which can be attached to it. And in the plastic bag, we have a selection of speaker enclosures. Uh, this is so that uh, you can select the most appropriate that will fit into your locomotive. So, let's open up our quick start guide and start installing this into our locomotive. The first step, of course, is to uh, remove the body from the locomotive so that we can get access to the printed circuit board within. So, uh, using our instructions from the leaflet that came with the loco, we remove the selected four screws and carefully take the body off. There we go. Now the 8-pin decoder will replace the green dummy board that you can see on the chip. Okay, you can see there there's 8 pins and they're numbered 1 to 8. So we carefully remove the, the green chip which can be a bit stiff, of course. Now, we have to fit the HM7000 chip over the top. Now, strangely, this comes with an unconnected purple wire. However, this appears to be intentional, as the chip only supports eight pins. Now, we line up number one on the chip. It's clearly marked with the one pin on the PCB. And fit it into slot. Now we're going to put some insulating tape over the top of the chip and uh, tidy away that purple wire. Now let's uh, get the sugar cube speaker out of his little bag. Now looking at the enclosures for the speakers, we can see that uh, the largest one will fit into this locomotive, so that's good news. So we've uh, cut out the plastic from the sprue and we're going to assemble the three parts of the speaker and its enclosure. 
Now the speaker comes with a, a little piece of white tape, which when you remove will give you an adhesive surface to uh, securely fasten the speaker into the casing. There we go, slip it in. And quickly just uh, place the speaker enclosure into the locomotive just above the flywheels. So finally, we just need to uh, connect the speaker connector into the Bluetooth chip. So if you actually uh, look at the Bluetooth chip, you will see on the reverse side, it will actually clearly mark which connector is for the speaker. So we're just going to slot that into there and that's us all complete. We now need to just tidy up the wiring, get all the tape back in position and put the casing back on. Okay, now it's time to set up our iPad. First thing to do is to scan the QR code on the quick start guide and it'll take us to this screen where we can select Get to uh, download the application to the iPad. After it's downloaded, we get the option to open, which will then start up the application. OK, just say yes, because we do want to use the Bluetooth. And then we will be presented with a login screen to put in our Hornby website credentials. We now have to place the locomotive on our DCC powered line and apply power. This will start up the Bluetooth chip and it will be detectable by the app as soon as we ask it to scan the Bluetooth network. There we go. It's immediately found our application which has been uh, broadcasting. Now we link to it which will bring up a screen saying, as usual, the Bluetooth and the ROM software all needs to be updated. So we'll let it do that on the iPad and we will be then ready to uh, configure our locomotive. First thing to do is uh, the Bluetooth firmware. Okay, we've uh, sped it up a little bit, but uh, that now has updated our AP ROM firmware. Everything is now up to date and we can uh, get on. Right, locomotive profile. So we need to power cycle the locomotive again after we've uh, downloaded this profile. And that takes us to the basic control screen for our loco. You can see there it has a, an ID number from the chip and it says it's address free and it's a new loco. So we need to configure it properly now. So if we browse the, the profiles, this will show us all the profiles for all the engines that Hornby have so far provided. Now, luckily for our locomotive, we get the option of a class 43 HS2 MTU. So we install that. The first part doesn't take very long. The second part we've uh, sped up slightly. Okay, so what that has done is installed the sound packs onto the decoder chip. Now, luckily, you only have to do that once. Now, we import the running profile. Power cycle again. And finally, we import the function map. This is important so that the, the list of options for sounds and activities that are displayed actually match the locomotive and not just the default set. So, initial setup is all complete. First thing to do, of course, is to customize it. So let's add a photograph of our logo. We shall take a picture using the camera on the iPad.
Okay, there's our photograph at the top of the app screen. Now we want to replace the name New Local with Inter7 City. We can give each locomotive an individual name or running number. This information I don't believe is stored on the actual chip, it's just for your information when browsing your locos to control. Now, let's go test the sounds. So here we have our final setup. In locomotive settings, we can choose the acceleration and deceleration rate. The higher you make these, the longer it will take to accelerate and decelerate to the selected speed. Note that the spot button will stop the engine automatically anyway. Global volume, the sounds are very loud. So I've set it quite low here and we can collect our moho here. Now, for example, if I want to speed up and uh, turn my engine on, that's the first thing to do. Turn on my lights, turn on the engine. And off we go. Stop the local because we'll take a little while to slow down. Let's come back the other way. Shutting off the power now will slow down to a gentle deacceleration. Again, if we speed it up now, we'll show you the stop button. Mostly stops straight away. Now here in our function map, we have all the various sounds that can be used. For example, multiple horns. Multiple horns number two. Brake squeal. Diesel notch up. We hear the engine revving up. And we have notch down. Idle. Here we have diesel fresh. Which can turn off. Diesel cold start. Now, there are multiple pages of these. The page numbers are at the top of the lists. Turn on the compressor. Turn off. Windscreen wipers. Cooling fan. Note that this is audio only, as the model I have doesn't actually have working fans. Driver buzzer. Flange squeal. If the options stay illuminated, then they will continue until you press them again to stop. 
whereas ones that uh, just come on momentarily are a single action sound. Door closed. Diesel primer. Cab warning bell. Guards whistle. And AWS test. And page three, we have driver buzzer, box lighting, which will have no effect on this model. Same with these other box options. We have a shunting mode, which again does not applicable to this model. Decoupling, which will actually move the engine. It will also operate in the direction the, the model is currently set for. Now, the, the option here to brake is a function key on the menu, and at the top there's a brake. So as soon as you press it, the OCO will slow down. And when you release it, it will start to speed up again. If you hold it down fully for longer, the OCO will actually come to a complete stop. And, of course, will resume moving as soon as you let go. And finally, there's an automatic function control that will loop through all the sounds in one large, long sequence. Let's start that up just to see what it's like. Okay, this sounds well, pretty excellent. So uh, let's give our train something more interesting to do. So we'll uh, couple up the power car to the rest of the train. Off we go then, and you can see it uh, accelerates at a nice steady state. Slowly comes to a halt in the reverse direction and uh, slowly move towards our cavities. Excellent. So move uh, back onto the main DCC line. So we can have a run around the track. And off we go. So that's us all done. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. What we're going to do now is just finish with a run around the layout and start from a station.
with that guard's whistle of course, a high speed run around the layout, and then we're going to stop at the station after gentle deacceleration. Hope you enjoyed this introduction to the world of HMDCC.